Well, how's it? And good morning, you guys. I thank you so much for tuning in and devoting yourselves to the hearing of God's Word today. And we just want to say welcome to the gathering of the people of God here at New Hope Community Church, where we love Jesus, disciple people, and we serve the community. Hey, my name is John, and I will be giving you guys announcements today. First is that starting next week, it will be our small group campaign. So for just four weeks, for one month, we're going to dedicate ourselves, commit ourselves right before the hustle and bustle of summer to gather, to hear the word of God, to uh, fellowship, to pray over each other, to have a good meal through small groups. So what you can do is go to our website, newhopecommunity.tv slash small dash groups and just fill out what kind of small groups you're interested in i know from tuesday to friday we have small group from men to women to kupuna to uh in person to zoom uh, whatever your needs are we would love for you to be connected and co just commit yourself uh, to uh, fellowship together through small groups okay uh, secondly is that mark your calendars for may 12th may 12th will be what Mother's Day and with Mother's Day every year we always have a baby dedication I think it's just it goes like peanut butter and jelly you know it just goes together Mother's Day and baby dedication uh, it will be a time where we will uh, just as a community celebrate with new life and new birth that has happened in our church but also stand in solidarity and support of the new parents out there and dedicate uh, the, their child so make sure to join us you can contact Ronnie at Ronnie at newhopecommunity.tv and then if you're interested to dedicate your child go ahead and get in contact with her all right and last but not least mark your calendars because we will have youth camp for all you junior high students, youth camp will be June 11th through the 14th. You can go to our website, hillcommunity.tv, under events over there, it says summer camp, Camp Kako. It's gonna be in Camp uh, Ho'onua in Kaneohe, so make sure to join us and register your junior higher June 11th through the 14th. And for high school, it will be July 24th through 26th and uh, all the high school students they'll be joining a month later and you could register the cost is two hundred dollars and we have had some uh, donations generous donors who are willing to uh, donate and to sponsor a camper so if cost is an issue do not let that be if you seek first god his kingdom all these things will be added unto you all right so uh, with that we're gonna prepare our hearts for our tithes and offering this morning and just as I said, uh, Matthew 6.33, that is one of my life verses. It's one of those things that just really anchor and ground me when it seems like the budget uh, doesn't match um, my living expenses. It doesn't match what my heart. I was like, hey, I'm going to seek God first. I'm going to seek His kingdom. And when I do that and His righteousness and His justice and it says, all these things will be added unto me so always seeking god first putting trusting god if you're able to if you're not able to trust god with your finances you can't trust him with your soul right if you can't trust god with your future and your eternity how can you trust god with your money in the same sense that if we put god first if we trust him that he is the provider not only that but trust him that god is the owner we are the stewards we just manage and steward what god has given us just like our lives it's not ours it belongs to the lord and everything that we have our relationships it's not ours it belongs to the lord same way with our resources and our funds it's not ours it belongs to god we're the ones that are able to steward and shepherd what god has given us right so let's be faithful in doing that thank you for continuing to support the advancement of God's kingdom by giving of yourselves, your time, talent, and treasure to the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord God, that as we prepare your hearts, our hearts, Lord, to receive your word, that you are here, that you stand witness. And Lord, I, I pray right now that your blessing and your presence and your countenance be upon us as your people, as we hear your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, church. Hey, would you go ahead and open your Bibles to Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10? 
We're actually going to continue our series on the book of Acts called To the Ends of the Earth. And remember the premise of the book is uh, this is what Jesus began to do and to teach and how it's in the Gospels, what Jesus did and what he taught. And now it's what the Holy Spirit did and taught through the early church with you and me and that we are to be witnesses in Jerusalem. Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so with that, uh, the title of my message this morning is Ministry in Action. You know, after the events of Pentecost, we've been told by Luke in Luke chapter 2 verse 43 that many signs and wonders were done through the apostles. In other words, the uh, the disciples, after the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the day of Pentecost, and when they started doing church together, they were doing signs and wonders. And Luke now, he gives in Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10, he gives us an account, a detailed account of one of these power encounters, these signs and wonder encounters that the early church did. And it's the narrative of a of a lame or a crippled man. Originally, I was I asked ChatGPT for some help. I was like, "What are some cool, uh, relevant, uh, captivating, thought-provoking, engaging sermon titles for Acts three one to ten? And the top the top one that came out was from begging to blessing, and it's about the the crippled man who encountered the apostles and was healed, but it sounded catchy. I was like, okay. But as I prayed and as I studied uh, for a couple of days, it just, the thrust, I believe, of the passage is the move of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and how th through uh, the power of the Holy Spirit, the church was birthed. And because of that, this man went, went from begging from one second to complete blessing and being blessed in one second. Okay, so Acts chapter 3 verses 1 through 10. Let's go ahead and read. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, which is three o'clock, and a man lame from birth was being carried, whom they had laid daily at the gate of the temple that is called the beautiful gate to ask alms of those entering the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them to receive alms. He was begging money from them. And Peter directed his gaze at him, and as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no gold, I have no silver, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took them by the right hand and raised them up. And immediately his feet and his ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. There's actually a children's song like that. And all the people saw him while walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple asking for alms. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. This is the word of the Lord. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we invite you right now because, Lord, we are fully dependent on you. We're fully aware, Lord God, it's not by might nor by power, it's but by your Holy Spirit. So, Lord, Holy Spirit, fill us right now. We empty ourselves, Lord, of anything that's not of you any regrets, Lord, any judgment, any anxieties, any unconfessed sins, we lay them down, O oh Lord, at the footstool of the cross, and we empty ourselves, and we ask, Lord, that you fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your presence. Would you stir in us, O oh Lord God, a hunger for your word, Lord, that the, that the fertile, that the the, the ground of our hearts, Lord God, would be fertile to receive your word, O oh Lord, that it would bear fruit a hundredfold. It would bear fruit, Lord God, in our lives, in our relationships. So, Lord, I just pray today that uh, we would see the power of your Holy Spirit ministry in action, Lord, that it would continue with us. Lord, would you do that for the sake of your glory and your great name? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, Peter, John, 
Peter and John as they went up to the steps from the outer court into the inner courts um, in order to be present in the court of Israel. They went into the temple and they're about to go into the evening part because uh, Jewish custom was two times a day you'd pray, nine in the morning and, uh, and three in the afternoon. And as they were on the way there, uh, they were crippled or they were arrested by this sight of uh, this crippled man. And this crippled man, uh, he was very smart. Uh, it says he was carried there from birth. From birth, he, wasn't, he hasn't been able to walk and he was lifted and carried there right in front of the temple. What strategy? You know what I mean? Like as people get into a church, as they go into temple, they make sacrifices to God. Of course, they have to be cognizant and recognize that they're neighbor. It's kind of like, you know, Girl Scout cookies, right? Uh, how they are always strategically pre, uh, placed right in front of Foodland or Times, right in front of supermarkets as you buy your groceries. Hey, why don't you go and support and buy Girl Scout cookies as well? Well, this uh, crippled man from birth hasn't been able to walk. He basically begs for money. He begs for money. And this is what he says. He asked for alms. He was just asking for money because he had no ability to make income for himself and to work. And so he had to beg uh, for all of his life uh, to be able to live. And something unexpected happened from blessing, from begging to blessing. And that is that God intervened, that the Holy Spirit was in action. What seemed like a Monday, just like a middle of the afternoon during the day, where he thought it was just going to be an ordinary uh, minutia of details of going through life, clocking in, clocking out, getting his money. God had other plans. And it's the power uh, and, and it's the ministry of the Holy Spirit in action. And there's two things I want to kind of highlight uh, this morning. The first is this, that ministry is more powerful as a team. Would you write that down? That ministry, it is more powerful, it is more potent when we do it as a team. There are no lone rangers. There's, no, there's only one Messiah. And because Jesus is the Messiah, we don't have to carry on any Messiah complex. We have a good example of the team ministry of uh, Peter and John here. In verse 1, it says, Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, at the ninth hour. Verse 3, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple. And verse 4, Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John. And they said, Look at us. See, Peter and John, they were continuing what Jesus commanded them to do in Mark chapter 6, verse 7, and also in Luke chapter 10, verse 1, that when Jesus sent his disciples to do ministry, he asked them to go two. When he commissioned the 72, he says, hey, go two by two, go into the towns, go proclaim the kingdom. The chapter before in the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, when Peter rose and addressed the crowds, he says, it says, Luke says, he stood up with the 11. So it wasn't just Peter by himself and everybody was sitting. The 11 stood up in support and solidarity as a team with Peter. In fact, when Peter talked that they are witnesses, he says, we are witnesses, not I. In Acts chapter 3, verse 15, and five, chapter 5, verse 32, he says, we are witnesses of the power of Jesus Christ. So Peter was not a lone voice. He had a ministry team backing him up when he spoke. In Acts chapter 8, verse 14, it was Peter and John who ministered after, uh, as a team in this incident too, or in this instance as well. In Acts chapter 10, verse 23, when Peter went to the home of Cornelius, it says that he took six brothers with him and he did ministry as a team. You know, in the book of Acts, it talks and it details three missionary journeys of Paul. In the first missionary journey from Acts 13 and 14, it was Paul, John Mark, and it was Barnabas. So this trio went into their Paul's first missionary journey. In his second missionary journey from Acts 15 through 17, it was Paul, Silas, Timothy, and Luke. 
the Avengers assembled and they went on their second missionary journey. And the third missionary journey from Acts chapter 18 to Acts chapter 21, it was Paul, Timothy, Sopater, Aristarchus, Secundus, Gaius, Tychicus, Trophimus, and Luke joining them with them as well. So in Paul's missionary journeys, he was not a lone ranger. He had a team. He decat doing church as a team, doing ministry as a team, and that's why they were so effective. You know, seven out of the 13 epistles that Paul wrote, it was co-authored by someone. In other words, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st Thessalonians, 2nd Thessalonians, and Philemon, they were co-authored not just by Paul, but also by Sylvanus, Timothy, and Sosthenes. So even writing of the letters, inspired word of God, it was a team effort. Why is ministry more powerful as a team? Ecclesiastes chapter 4 will give us a reason, gives us four reasons. Number one is that there's greater fruitfulness when we do stuff together. Ecclesiastes 4, 9, two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. There is more fruitfulness. The power of one may be good, but two, you exponentially, you double the, the fruitfulness and the reward and the longevity of doing this together because two are better than one because they have a, they have a good return for their work. Secondly, is that there's help in times of personal failure. In Ecclesiastes 4.10, if one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. I think there's no greater illustration of a team than a marriage. I don't know if you notice in your own life, but in my own life, uh, when I'm down and I'm low, usually Renee is up. And because she's up and I'm low, she was able to, Ecclesiastes says, if one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity is the man who falls and he has no one to come and help him up. Or when Renee is, is down and she's low and she's kind of going through the valleys, I'm in the mountain peaks and I'm able to help her up and encourage her. I remember the first, uh, when Renee and I were dating in college and I had like, you know, I had finals, I had papers due, I was working part-time, I was taking 18 units or 18 credits at school, and it, it was final times, so it was crunch time, and she was just like, hey babe, don't worry, I believe in the God that you serve. And at first, oh thanks, I'm like, wait, wait a minute, I believe in the God that you serve. You believe in God, you don't believe in me, right? And she goes, oh no, 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 I mean, I believe God's work is in you. It's like, babe, like, I love you, you're a man. and she would just encourage me. And it's like, hey, you're a man after God's own heart. Uh, you are anointed, you are called for this. You have been equipped. Uh, the Holy Spirit has you and, and just really build up my faith, you know? And there's times when she's low and I was like, babe, like you are a anointed woman of God. Babe, God is so faithful. Babe, you, you the Holy Spirit has set you apart since you were a little girl to now. God is so faithful and we are able to encourage one another and build each other up. And there's help in times of personal failure. That's why um, teams, uh, team ministry is more powerful when we do it together. Third reason is there's warmth of affirmation in times of need. Verse 11, also if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Listen, e even though if one of you is weak and the other is strong, how about if even if both of you are weak and if both of you are low, there is strength in being weak together. There's strength of carrying each other's burdens together. Not in the sense of misery loves company, but in the sense of going through hardships together. You know the old adage, right, of draft horses and how a single draft horse can pull 8,000 pounds alone? 
kind of like those Clydesdale horses, the Bud Light commercials or Bud, yeah, Budweiser commercials. They can pull 8,000. You know how many two draft horses can pull? You would think 16,000, but it's not. Two draft horses can pull 24,000 pounds pulling. Why? Because they're working together. There's a sense of warmth, of affirmation in time of need when we partner up together. Number four is their strength to face attacks. Ecclesiastes 4.12, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. There is strength in numbers and there is strength in solidarity. When we're unified, it's like that scene in Gladiator. Hey, if we individually, we, we can't make it against these uh, Roman soldiers, these barbarians. But if we huddle up together, and if we join forces, if we watch each other's back, if you watch my back, I watch your back, and we watch each other's back, we're able to, to win and defeat the attacks that are coming before us. You know, there have been a barrage of pastors with ministries who fell into serious sin. And one of the reasons is that they did not have a group to which they were accountable to. And, you know, I don't want to be a part of that st statistic. So, you know, personally, just to clarify and that there's alignment and there's clarity, like I meet with a group of pastors, personal friends of mine, every other week via Zoom. And then last month, I meet with another, a different group of pastors every week, every Wednesday morning at Coco Marina. And then we just pray and we believe in each other. We pray for each other's churches. We pray for each other's health. We pray for each other's spouses and our kids and our ministries. And we, we lift each other up. Not only that, but I meet with council members from our church every month that I am accountable to that I have shared with candor, with transparency, with honesty. I let them know, hey, I'm kind of feeling like junk. I'm kind of feeling dry. And they've been, they've been able to speak life into me. They've been able to encourage me. So in your relationships this morning, if you want greater fruitfulness, if you want help in times of personal failure, if you want warmth and affirmation in times of need, if you want strength to face attacks, here's your action point. Would you write this as our action point? Team up with someone on mission in your circle of influence. Team up with somebody or a group of people in your circle of influence. You don't need to be a pastor. Right? But in your circle of influence, team up with a group of people or somebody that you are on mission for the gospel. What do I mean by that? Start, start right where you're at and start right now. So, if you're married, be intentional. Team up with your husband. Team up with your wife and be on mission to disciple your kids. Team up, pray together, pray for each other, join forces, assemble like the Avengers as a married couple to disciple your grandchildren. Have a plan, pray, uplift one another. If you are working in the office, team up with another co-worker, a Christ follower, or a group of Christians, do devotions together, pray for your workplace, pray for your bosses, pray for your co-workers, um, pray and start a, a, a Bible study group, start a prayer group, team up. Don't do it by yourself. There's strength in numbers. There's strength when we do stuff together. In fact, uh, the psalmist says, when people of God dwell together in unity, there God commands a blessing. When we work together, God, when there's unity, one heart, one mind, one purpose, one faith, one, one baptism, one Lord, God commands His blessing when we team up. In your community, start where you're at. Know your neighbors. 
Maybe start with your husband or your wife or your Christian neighbor. Know them and maybe commit to praying for your neighborhood. Maybe start doing prayer walks around your block, around your community and team up and reach. Go on mission together and team up. Students, team up with one another. Team up with another solid Christian or a solid group of Christians and be on mission for your campus. Fast, pray, intercede that God would cause a revival in you and that there would be a revival in your campus. Start a, a Christian club, join, support, pray for, give of your time, talent, and treasure into a Christian club, into your community, into your campus. You know, Judah and Noah, my kids, they, I love that there's, they're partnering up together to reach their friends for Christ. They, they bring them for youth. Like Judah drives and Noah's kind of like the administrator. It's like, okay, so-and-so needs a ride. So-and-so needs a ride. Okay, you got him. I was like, okay, cool. And I love that, you know, they have friends that, that are maybe struggling. It's like, okay, I talked to them. I prayed with them. Oh, cool. I talked to them too. And then there's different uh, just affirmations, different points of connection, different stickiness where people are, uh, are their friends are being discipled. And um, one of the great joys last two weeks ago was when we had water baptism. And water baptism, remember two weeks ago, there was no electricity. It was stormy. It was windy. It was rainy. And I loved it because it, it demonstrated that not everything has to be perfect, not everything has to be good, not everything has to be ideal for you to follow Jesus. You could follow Jesus with no electricity, you could follow Jesus in the storm, in the wind, and in the rain. And as we people share their testimony, one of the kids, one of the students that's been going to youth group, actually, I remember Noah, my son, my middle child, telling Judah, it's like, hey, Judah, uh, why don't we, uh, I just got a hold of Aubrey. Uh, can you pick her up for baptism? She goes, oh, okay, okay, yeah, right on. And uh, when we were doing water baptism, it's like, okay, anybody else want to get baptized? And she spontaneously raised her hands like, I want to get baptized. She shared her testimony. She shared her journey of where she was at and, and how the Lord has restored her. And she wanted to make a decision on her own that she wanted to follow, follow Christ. And that is the power of teaming up together here's actually a, a picture of her water baptism certificate and what a special day amen and number two we'll go ahead and close with this is that ministry can come through unexpected interruption and personal interaction ministry can be birth and ministry can come when there's interruptions in our life that we didn't expect and when we interact with people personally. Verse 3, we see, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms. You know what I love about ministry is ministry can both, just like prayer life, it could be planned, but it can also be spontaneous. Like ministry, you go to church, you serve, right? And that's planned. But other times, ministry, you're, you're on your way to do something, just like Jesus, and he gets interrupted, and that becomes a, an expression of ministry. Peter and, their, Peter and John, they were on their way to their temple, but they were interrupted by this crippled man who hasn't walked since, he, since birth. And Peter and John were willing to be interrupted and minister to this man. You know what I love about Peter and John and the disciples, um, and this is the premise of the book by John Mark Comer, uh, Practicing the Way, is be with Jesus, become like Jesus, and do what Jesus did. Earlier when the disciples, especially Peter and John, they were, as they were spending time with Jesus, and they were being with Jesus, and they, they started becoming like Jesus. But as when they first hang out, were hanging out with Jesus, they became apprentices of Jesus. Peter and John, 
like the disciples when kids were come would come up to Jesus and be ministered to Peter and John like hey get away get away Jesus has more important people to see he has places to see people to go uh, you know people to go to and attend important people and Jesus says, hey don't forbid these kids to come let them come to me so I may lay my hands on them and bless them in fact in Mark chapter 10 there's this uh, instance where there's a blind man uh, from Jer uh, named Bartimaeus. He was from Jericho and Jesus and his disciples they were going down to Jericho, Jericho and Bartimaeus is blind man. He heard about Jesus and he's like Jesus son of David have mercy on me and it says many. It's, it's, it's in Mark but also in Luke. Um, I don't know if the disciples were there. I, I think they were probably there. They were probably too shame and they wanted to save their face but it says many people told the Bartimaeus to be quiet and to shut up and to keep quiet. But Bartimaeus uh, cried aloud, loud more, cried even louder, reached out even louder to Jesus. And of course, Jesus heals Bartimaeus when he says, hey, what do you want me to do for you? I want to receive my sight. Okay, be healed. Why am I saying this? Well, the disciples, they were with Jesus, be with Jesus. They become like Jesus. And now they are doing what Jesus did. Before, when they're on their way and people interrupted them, they're like, no, we got places to see. We got people to see, places to go. We got more important stuff on the agenda. Here's our schedule. Here's our task. Here is our itinerary. Here's what we got to do. But as they were with Jesus and they become like Jesus, now they did what Jesus did, that, that they were interruptible. They were willing to stop what they were doing, put a pause on their agenda in order to minister to people. You know, it's been said that the ministry for Jesus was a series of interruptions, all peppered throughout the Gospels. Jesus was on his way to do to somewhere, and there's a woman with an issue of bleeding that touched him, touched him. Jesus was on his way to somewhere, and a Samaritan woman was there. Jesus was on his way to somewhere, on his way going about his business and there's come Zacchaeus that uh, ministry for Jesus was a series of interruptions listen you guys an interruption in your day can be God's intervention for somebody else when your schedule is interrupted it could be that God is intervening so that you could minister to somebody else Say it another way, a disturbance to your schedule can be deliverance to a soul. When your schedule is fixed and oh, I got to do this and it got disturbed, maybe a person, maybe a homeless person, maybe it's a neighbor, maybe it's a coworker, maybe it's a barista, maybe someone at the supermarket and they disturb your schedule, it could be an opportunity for you to bring deliverance to a soul. A halt in your day can be healing for somebody else. A brief stop in your task can be eternal salvation to somebody. When you stop doing your task in order to minister to people face to face, it can be a salvation. A stop can lead to salvation for somebody else. A moment of waiting we are about to do something you're in the middle of something and then you, you a moment that you have to wait and love the person right in front of you that can become a milestone of wholeness so not only can ministry come through unexpected interruptions but also personal interaction Acts chapter 3 and Peter directed his gaze at him as did John and said look at us but Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I do have to give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and his ankles were made strong. So the command to walk given by Peter in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth the command was accompanied by the power to walk, imparted by the same name. I love that Peter and John 
stop what they're doing. He said, look at us. Jesus says, your eyes are the windows to your soul. He said, look at us. Let's make a heart to heart, life on lie, eye to eye connection right now. Not only did he say, look at us, but it says Peter grabbed him by the right hand and lifted him up. And as he did that, as he made this personal connection, powerful ministry happened. See, ministry is not a cold. It is not a stale transaction, but it is a life on life, a heart uh, to heart. It is a personal interaction. We got to be where people are at. It is the sharing of heart. It is the sharing of your life. It's the sharing of your whole self to, to people uh, to love your neighbor as yourself. Theologically, this is, is the purpose of the incarnation, that God is with us. God is not distant. God is not far, but He was with us. The same God who went to the muck of dirt and created and molded and formed you and me, went down to the muck of the stable, went down to the muck of the manger to be with us. And this is who Jesus is. And this is why I love him. I'm so just enthralled with who Jesus is. He didn't just didn't proclaim it from heaven. This, he just didn't say be healed, but he got to where people were at. And he, this is what the disciples did. Got him by the right, right hand, helped him up to get to his feet. And he stood on his feet. His feet and his ankles were strengthened. He was able to walk for the first time in his life. And before Peter was able to preach the gospel, he addressed people's spiritual need. He addressed their physical need. And addressing the physical need opened the door for their spiritual need. The holistic gospel was presented. And here's our action point, uh, and we'll close with this, is be interruptible and engage in personal interaction with people. Be interruptible. Be willing to be interrupted. If you're a student, right where you're at, you can minister to, to your classmate in front of you. You can pray for them. If you're in the office, you could stop where you're at, share with your coworkers. Um, as they share their problems at home, you could stop. Hey, could I pray for you right now? And do as Jesus did. Pray for them in the authority of Jesus. If you're a dad, if you're a mom and you're doing laundry, you're washing dishes, you're cleaning the house, you're vacuuming, you're sweeping, and your child comes to you and is like, hey, this is what's going on. Stop what you're doing. Be interruptible and personally interact with your son or your daughter. If you're taking out the rubbish and your neighbor's like, hey, how's it? And begins to talk to you, stop what you're doing and minister to them right there and engage in, in conversation. Amen? Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercies. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. And I pray right now, Lord, for your people, oh God, that we would partner with you. Lord, I pray that we would do so under the power of your Holy Spirit that we would be a people of God, united, joined together, that we will not be an island, that we will not be siloed, but Lord, in solidarity and unity with oneness of heart, mind, purpose, and faith, Lord, that we would support the advancement of your kingdom, that we would be on mission for you, O Lord. So Father, we love you, we worship you, in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Please. Go to our website, newhopecommunity.tv slash small group. Sign up for a small group. We'll get you connected. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord give you peace. Go with God and God will go with you. Love you guys.